Hello everybody. I'm Gurumurthy from IT for Change. I'm happy to be here and talk to you and I would like to thank Ani from Badana Thoda Abhiyan for giving me this opportunity. I'm going to talk about our work in ICT programs in school education and uh, this is the area in which PPPs have been introduced in a fairly large scale across India. And from our own research and our own field work, I'm going to look at how these models have fared and what are the learnings for us for the larger PPPs in school management etc that we are now talking about. Firstly, I would like to clarify that the term private itself is used in multiple ways and different ways which can be confusing. We all know about the traditional aided schools in which the government financially supports schools under private management. However, here the private is a not-for-profit entity which could be a trust or an NGO which put its, puts its own money into the school and doesn't expect an economic return. However, PPPs, the way they are being promoted and used very widely in India today, the private entity is a for-profit entity which is actually investing for the purpose of recouping an economic return. And this distinction is very important to understand, especially in the context of school education. In school education, private entities have had a role to play in providing various goods and services, but these are in the nature of private contracts rather than as partnerships. However, in ICT programs, the government has been promoting the new PPP models, which is uh, in which the private entities are actually companies. So what happens in the ICT at schools program, which is a fairly large government of India funded program work operating in uh, all states in India, the ICT program is outsourced to a commercial entity like NIT or Aptech. The government pays annuities to the partner, to this private party for creating and setting up the infrastructure. And the private party owns the infrastructure over the boot period providing the curricular resources and textbooks and also the faculty who transacts this curriculum. Now, Planning Commission in its document on you know, draft policy on PPPs in education makes the claim that ICT PPPs in school education have succeeded and uh, we should actually learn for, from them for implementing larger PPP models in school education. However, our research uh, work clearly shows us that ICT PPPs in school education have largely been a failure and we need to understand why they have failed and what are the implications for larger PPPs in school education. We did a study of two large states in India, Kerala and Karnataka. In Karnataka, the boot model was adopted and in which the government outsourced the program to uh, commercial vendors who provided the curriculum. Now, technology vendors, the curriculum they provide largely pertains to operating system office, etc. because these companies don't really have a very deep understanding of education and of the subject that are taught in the schools. Uh, the second thing is uh, the faculty that is employed by these companies are very poorly paid around three to four to five thousand rupees a month and for that money typically you get people who are not well qualified who don't understand who don't have a deep understanding of education and who are not able to do much more than computer literacy work with the students. The faculty also work with the students bypassing the teachers. Because of all these reasons, the program is standalone. The regular teachers of the school do not show any interest or engagement with the program. Even as far as the children are concerned, initially there's a lot of novelty, but over a period of time, there is very little learning. We, our research showed that there are schools where students spend three years just learning a software like WordPad, which actually can be learned in half an hour. Now, uh, these are the problems with having a poorly paid faculty of a private vendor and having curriculum that is not connected to the school subjects. Now, since the government spends all the money on the annuities, there is no money for teacher training. So teachers don't know how to use the computers for their own subject teaching learning. And this is the basic picture of the boot model in Karnataka. In contrast, the Kerala model is uh, one in which the whole work is done in-house. The department has created a resource pool of master trainers from the regular teachers uh, who uh, learn to use computers for variety of subject teaching learning. Now, because these teachers are from the education system, they have been working in schools for a long time, teaching their subjects. They are able to actually use a computer not for teaching MS Office or Windows, but for teaching mathematics using a tool like GeoGebra, science using a tool like FET or STEP, using Sunclock or Marble for teaching geography, etc. These teachers in turn have trained their colleagues in a cascade model and every single teacher in Kerala has been trained to use computers, to have their own email ID, to use a variety of software resources for regular subject teaching learning. Now the number of resources used in Kerala is very large, unlike a boot model where typically you have operating system in office. Here a large number of educational tools have been used. I have highlighted the URL where you can find a list of those software tools available. The net result of this model is that there's a high level of engagement from the teachers and the school over the program. They feel it's their program, that the computers are actually helping them make their job easy by 
transacting different topics using digital methods which can be computers which can be videos and schools actually go to their way to persuade uh, people to donate computers or uh, buy computers for them that's the kind of ownership that we see i have visited around 40 schools myself across four different districts and invariably there's a lot of ownership and engagement from the teachers over the program if you do deeper analysis of this problem what we really find is that education is a social infrastructure space it is not an economic infrastructure space what this means is at a systemic level school education is not economically profitable and the investment that is required to be made will get huge returns but these are social returns over a longer period of time uh, in terms of enlightened citizens enlightened communities etc whereas a commercial entity is looking for economic returns in a short period of time now in trying to make economic returns in a short period of time the entities have to do different kinds of practices which actually make the program a failure and paying faculty very poorly who cannot actually transact and use computers for subject teaching learning undercutting investment on maintenance which creates high downtime not providing internet which deprives the children and teachers of a very important source of learning we find that invariably in boot models almost none of the schools have internet provision on a continued continuous basis and of course there is no investment or little investment on the faculty training so we had situations where the faculty was supposed to teach linux and had got one day training on linux from the company which obviously didn't equip them for this training so the net result of the boot model where a commercial entity which is aiming to make profit is given a very core activity of teaching learning user tool using icts results in a situation where the basic purpose of the program fails because the purpose of the commercial entity is very different uh, from the purpose of the education system in outsourcing that particular program and uh, that's basically uh, the uh, i think the learning that we need to look at when we are saying let's privatize let's outsource outsource schools to private managements if these are not for profit entities which are planning to invest their own funds and monies into the school it's a different issue and who are not expecting an economic return it's a different issue however if these are companies for profit entities which are actually trying to make a profit out of it there can be the odd delhi public school or odd private school which can make profit but at a systemic level it is not going to be prof- uh, possible and therefore when you talk of thousands of schools being handed over to private entities it is certainly a recipe for a, a disaster in the making the private sector has a very important role but that's in terms of goods and service provision and not really in terms of partnership influencing the core processes of curriculum or pedagogy in a school uh, since i am not here i would like to leave my email address and contact here there are some other websites that we maintain which are also relevant uh, from this topic point of view if you have time i would like you to see this uh, youtube video in which the director ramesh karnataka also talks about the issues in outsourcing in his own way and uh, uh, if you have any questions feel free to mail me uh, and i shall get back to you thank you once again for this opportunity to speak to all of you